Hello, this talk is on color, the theory of color for printing and computers, photos. So, color on computers is measured using the system called RGB, which is red, green and blue. These three colors on the monitor make up all the remaining colors. So, when you shine a red light, a blue light and a green light, you get a white light. And if you mix red and green, you get a yellow. And if you mix red and blue, you get a cyan. A sky light and if you mix red and blue you get a magenta or purple so if you look with a, at the lens at the screen closely LCD screen you'll see each character is made up of pixels small square that pixel is made up of three LEDs red green and blue that's where you get the thing so depending on the intensity of the colors uh, you light whichever one up you see all the different colors on the screen so the can't if it, all of them are off, you see black. If only blue is on, you see blue. If blue and green are on, you see cyan. And if you have red and blue on, you see magenta. If you have red and green on, you see yellow. And if all three on, you see white. That's a basic theory. So in Photoshop, you can change your modes. If you say image mode RGB, you can change it to CMYK. That is a printing mode. Printing colors. The RGB is the screen mode. CMYK is the the one used by the book printers and newspapers. So C stands for can, the can ink, magenta ink, yellow ink, and the black ink. And or you can use the lab colors or grayscale. These are different ways people generate their printouts. So here are the options you can see which color, which is the mode of color that you want your photo for. And then you can name colors. So one is that you can call these reds, purples, pink, orange, and stuff blue. Or you can use the name purple, green, blue, individual name for it. And most of them are standard in CSS and in computer language. Honey and banana, they may not be standard, lime or fern or moss. And so each has a name and a, a six hex digit code. Hash means it's in hexadecimal. And first two are the red, intensity of red. FF means 255 over 255. Otherwise, 00, 0 means 0 over 255. So it ranges from 0 to 255, the intensity of the color red. The next two characters are for green, R, G, and B. B is for the next is for blue. So in the red, you see E5. So this is the intensity of red. The other two colors are off. And yellow, you see FF, FF. So yellow is full on, and uh, blue is slightly there. And then CM, CYMK is the printer ink, color printer. Color printer, if you take a butterfly picture and enlarge it in a microscope, you see cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. And you combine all these, you get this picture. And this is in a microscope. So you need these four color inks in a printer. And the printing is like the additive instead of the subtractive. So what happens when you combine two color inks, it becomes darker and darker. So you combine red, cyan, yellow, and magenta, you get black. But since these inks are so expensive, you just have a cheaper black ink for black stuff instead of using three colors to make a black color. And then you can, you can it's a reverse. So yellow and magenta make red and cyan and yellow make green. Green and magenta make blue. Okay, so this is the printing ink. And so sometimes when you, in Photoshop it will say, uh, gamut warning what that means is you can see it on your screen but it won't be able to print it the printer is a physical device and even your monitor is a physical device and your eyes are also a different kind of device sometimes you can see things with your eyes but you cannot print it because the printer doesn't have all those colors so this is additive scheme the subtractive scheme and gamut is a range of colors that a device or a display or printer can print and so Photoshop says out of gamut that means okay it's not possible to print using the combination you're trying so basically sometimes your monitor will show blues as purple and purple as blue but the eyes are very adaptable so eyes can adjust and depending on the light you see different things in tube light and tube light is actually very not regular not it looks white but it's not really white compared to sunlight so eyes are adjusted over millions of years to see sunlight as white and we can see the colors that are in sunlight and in night in night sodium lights it's only yellow every other color every other color appears black in sodium lights 
okay so if you get a gamut warning that means you, you not it will not look good on a printer so this is a color picker in photoshop so you go around selecting blue and you go around here selecting a foreground color using a color picker and then you say and these are the so first of all you get this warning warning out of gamut for printing so you don't be able to print it it depends on how you to set your printer and you can say only web colors it will show you only things that are possible to select using the color so these are the colors this is the hue hue has hsb saturation and then there is lab lab format and there is cmyk printer format and rgb format and this is a hash value so blue looks like this in hue saturation and b and rgb different ways of representing the same color so color picker also color picker also has a pantone color solid coated so these are the naming schemes for different printers have these uh, color namings because color is not uniform if it what the paint you take will look different in different lights and so each printer has its own or color maker has its own way of making color so there's a pantone scheme so pantone 270 sexy is this light blue so sometimes when you are ordering colors you depend on the so oil paint or water based paint or water color you to say according to the scheme that the, the print the color maker is using and saturation is the purity of the color a completely pure color is called saturated and it's not diluted white so red has a value high saturation so this side is highly saturated this is more unsaturated so eventually it becomes white so less and less more of white in it but if you use saturated colors too much eyes get strained so you use a mixture of a color in printing and viewing unless you're trying to attract a gaudy it's called gaudy if you use printing design and this is the regular pastel colors it's a pure single color pastel colors are used are easier to read than saturated colors in photoshop you have the similar thing called if you type uh, image adjustments hue and saturation or control u the shortcut you'll get this this uh, menu so this control which says you can change a hue use a color so these are chalks if you change a hue to left side the red becomes green becomes yellow or whatever and saturation you can increase or decrease and lightness is how dark it is and you can turn preview on and then you can other options are desaturate replace color you can try all of these later so in the color info in photoshop there's a eyedropper you go and point it to an image and there's a chalks.jp is an image at 100% in rgb format and you point to the color dropper you get this info it says rgb value of this color cmyk value of this color xy is a coordinate where x and y is here or where you're pointing your thing height and weight is zero and you're not really making a triangle and color is also divided into stored as three different channels red green and blue in the rgb format and then there's a channel in the photoshop for storing different colors you can edit individual channels if you are not happy with the green channel but that's advanced right now you just look at the basics and then you, in photoshop and picasa you have a color histogram you turn on a color histogram in the in, in the menu from the menus you see the channel rgb channel it shows you the levels input levels and output levels and if you adjust these bars you can adjust the, the saturation and the the minimum maximum of the colors so this is a distribution of the rgb colors and you can if you change it you can save it or you can ignore or cancel it and in this case this is from picasa for google picasa is showing the the dis color distribution of four different colors and also telling how the photo was made it was made with this camera at this speed and this lens and what speed the lens was used so this this information is inside the inside the jpg file you can have all kinds of information stored in a jpg file when it was taken where it was taken and you'll get to it later on if you look in fun view software if you use you can actually edit all the information inside the thing so the main most useful function in photoshop or uh, in software photo editing is the equalization if you just go to levels and say equalize auto so the color is unevenly distributed becomes equally distributed and the color looks sharper and clearer and that makes up for the bad lighting in the camera whatever and mostly you can do it unless you really were missing light then the camera cannot undo what we're missing but it can surely add 
what was not there and use the color of the of the name of the color so you have red orange pink so these are the primary colors the three uh, primary colors red blue and green and then there are secondary colors when you mix them you get more colors so these are the primary the secondary colors orange purple and green and you mix them more you get tertiary third colors like mixing orange and red you get darker red of orange they are different names not get into it and then you can also do an image in Photoshop image adjustments brightness and control you increase the brightness and you can increase the contrast of the image it looks like this we increase the contrast and brightness so brightness the amount of light in a camera so as you increase the brightness you can see what happens it looks more whiter this is darker real photo original photo and brighter photo contrast is the amount of gray in a color Contrast also depends on the background. So which square is brighter? This is darker or this is brighter? It looks this looks darker is bright. But actually if you look in Photoshop by using a color picker, they both are the same RGB values. So what it means is because the eyes are wrapped to the background lighting, we think this is dark because it's brighter background and here's darker background, we think this is a lighter in color square. So those are the things eyes play a lot of tricks on us and a camera is not doesn't have any tricks so camera will actually see the picture as it is or a photo software so and then contrast is there contrast this is a high contrast picture this is a low contrast picture this is in black and white in grayscale and gradient you can have a gradient means varying from one color to another color red to yellow this is a gradient you can do it in photoshop gradient tool and grayscale is a range of from black to white this is grave scale photo and this is a black and white photo you can see the difference so newspapers sometimes use black and white when they can't do grayscale some old printers foot cyclo styling would do black black and white photos and you can change your mode in photoshop image mode grayscale to grayscale this will become grayscale and lumin luminosity is the brightness of the color that is added to the amount of black and white added to a color the larger the luminosity the lighter the color so these are the hues this is the saturation changes and the luminosity the lightness changes so it goes from black to white from from saturated to unsaturated and different colors there are many ways of looking at color and color contrast so the thing is like just because a computer cannot see it's not the eye so but the eyes eventually this image is seen by eye so this is not effective it's hard to read green on red but black on pink is easy to read, light pink. So some are effective, some are not. So these are effective, these are ineffective. And it depends on like the aesthetics of the designer to know which colors go well with which. And then color contrast is, you can see that like some colors go well. Black, black color on yellow is like a taxi color. These are okay. And also it depends on how much can you afford the ink. Computer inks don't matter, but if you have to paint it, it would be expensive. Some colors are more expensive than other colors. So you try to m minimize the cost and maximize the branding value of your writing. So black, black and white is easiest to read. The reason we have black on white is you have to use black ink on white paper and not have white ink on black paper. And these are okay. Yellow, red on yellow, or black on red on black, red on orange. Okay, and these are really bad because the eyes cannot deal with green on red or green red on green type of colors so these are called the luminous luminance and psychology of illusions so the mind sees the picture differently from the eye so eyes actually collect the light and it goes to the mind and the mind actually has processing to convert the image so the eyes will start sh seeing shining dots out even though this is just a static it looks dynamic because we are seeing illusions in the brain we, the brain is trying to process this pattern and there is no pattern out. It looks like light popping out. And also remember colors have emotions associated with them. So blue is considered cool and boys generally wear blue when they are small and girls wear normally pink or warm colors. So pink is girls. And maybe it is no longer true but this is the traditional uh, color codes. And organic is green and sunny is yellow. Red is like ripe f fruit and blue is the ocean and green is the trees so 
there are a lot of color blind charts if you look on google you'll find a lot of charts so what can what numbers can you see inside these green and red uh, uh, dots so depending on what kind of vision you have you'll see different numbers and you can find out if you can read the numbers inside this square this square this one not sorry, circle this one this one this one and this one and if your eyes are not cannot kind of film in blue and red you'll see, see nothing out there otherwise 25 this is 7 8 6 56 29 and 45 okay so this is the solution and pixel what is a pixel pixel is a dot of color so if you look at a picture magazine photo in cmyk if you zoom in you'll see these dots and if you zoom in more it is is made up of really small color that's a pixel so resolution is measured in dots per inch by a printer Num the higher the resolution the higher dots per inch and smaller the dots are so how do we measure it 150 dpi dots per inch is the web resolution not very sharp it's okay 300 dpi is what is used by laser printers in homes and offices and 600 dpi is good good quality laser printer and if you're really good quality you use 1200 dpi for books and photo prints so you'll have to know when you because also if you double the thing the image becomes larger and larger if you have a higher quality the same image will come have more and more dots in it of more and more details so as you can zoom in more if you have a higher dpi you can zoom in more otherwise it'll look hazy so what is a megapixel versus printing chart so this is a megapixel so it's 3 megapixel to 8 megapixel chart resolution 3 megapixel is 2000 by 1500 image size you can print it at 7 inch by 5 inch at 300 dpi so dpi matters because the better the dpi you can zoom in more and make a larger post so you can make so 300 dpi can make a, a, at 150 ppi this is uh, print per inch points per inch so 7 by 7 10 by 10 you can print at 200 dpi so as you enlarge it the dpi ppi goes down and at 8 megapixel you have 3000 by 2000 image but remember that these are like just collection of dots if your lens is not good if your photograph is not good no amount of technology can make your photo better the color combination is not good or the, your photographer is not good at ca capturing expression the timing is very important and we'll look at that later but sometimes a 3 megapixel camera can take better picture than a like 100 megapixel if the, the person if you actually compose your photo better so 10 megapixel you have thousand three thousand four thousand by two and a half thousand and it keeps going up so eventually we have a 35 mm film scan which runs at five thousand by uh, three thousand pixels and 20 mm 20 m a film scan so you can make really large posters but nowadays we get really high resolution things and this is like quite old data so you may have better cameras now that's it thanks